Hey everybody, it's low carbon keto nutritionist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com talking to you once again about doing keto without the crazy. Before I get into today's topic, as always, there'll be some notes down below in the um, in the notes for the video. First will be a link to the Meet Me in Person tab on my website so you can find information about events you can meet me at that are coming up. Um, Calendar is starting to fill in for 2020, so that's cool. Come see me in person at some low carb or keto conference or other event. Number two will be a link to the free, free sneak peek preview of my new book, The Stall Slayer. Um, I hope to have that out. It's probably not going to come out until sometime in December, maybe even after the new year. But it is about breaking fat loss stalls on keto, so you can download the free preview. And I guess that's it. Let's get into things. I wanted to do a video about how we react to studies that come out that indicate red meat is bad for us, bad for health, whatever. I'm The environmental argument is a whole separate topic that I'm not going to get into right now because I actually want to make shorter videos, at least some short videos and some long, so let's keep some short. Um, and I, this is actually the second time I started recording this. The first one, I started to say, you know, let's start off with all the reasons red meat is actually really good for us. And I talked about heme iron and B12 and selenium and all of these nutrients that are actually shortfalls for some people. And I, I stopped the video because I'm like, no, 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 that's not even what this is about. We all know red meat is one of the most nutrient rich health promoting things you can possibly put in your mouth so i'm not even going to waste time on it if you're on a low carb diet hopefully you already know red meat is per not only perfectly fine to eat but actually really 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 good for you if you don't know that if you still have some lingering fear about red meat i can do a separate video on why that's all nonsense you know the the, the fear-mongering arguments about red meat now i wanted to really talk about how we specifically in the low carb keto paleo real food community um how we react to these studies because every other week some studies coming out you know that something in red meat is bad for us whether it's the saturated fat whether it's something the, the actual heme iron which you know isn't a central nutrient, but I guess somehow that's bad for us, whatever. Um, whether it's something called TMAO, you may have seen articles about that. There's, there's a couple of other compounds that have very funky alphanumeric names that, that are, you know, now, oh, that's the reason red meat's bad for us. Maybe it's not the saturated fat, it's the TMAO, or it's this other thing. And here's the problem with how we in our community tend to react to this. I see people, you know, chiming in well well was the meat grass fed well was it you know was it organic what did they eat gmo feed people please hear me on this that is not the issue okay that is here here's the point and here's you you are totally missing the point because the point is not you know well i i bet if they had used grass-fed beef it would have been shown to be healthy or i bet if the meat was organic or if they were eating you know biodynamic whatever instead of gmo corn and soy i bet then the study wouldn't have shown me to be bad no 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 that's not what this is about because the problem is that these studies pardon my language are bullshit to begin with they are bullshit to begin with. Don't even indulge them. Don't even give them an enough credit to say, well, of course red meat was shown to be bad for you. You didn't use grass-fed organic beef. No, because there's nothing wrong with beef, period. There's nothing bad about it, whatever the cows were eating. Now, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know I actually have worked at farms. I'm working at a local farm in North Carolina now where we raise beef cattle, we have lamb, we do produce, we do pork, we do it all. Um, so do I believe that there is a better way, whether it's environmentally, whether it's hu humanely raised, whether it's for nutrients, do I believe there's a better way to produce animal food? Yes, but 
that doesn't mean that regular old conventional feedlot supermarket beef is harmful for you. It isn't. There is a very slight difference in the nutrient content of something grass fed or pasture raised and all that versus conventional food. Is my, my necklace is crooked? What's up with that? Okay. Um, there is a small difference, but that difference is not enough to account for regular old conventionally raised beef to be bad for you because it's not period again here's the point here's you totally sailing past the point um i mean th think of it this way all the studies that come out that show that sugar is bad for you or or too much sugar i should say because a little bit of sugar not going to kill you constantly high blood sugar constantly high insulin is the problem right so tons and tons and tons of carbohydrate tons and tons and tons of sugar in someone who's carbohydrate intolerant or has a metabolic illness that's a problem nobody chimes in and says well was it organic sugar was it biodynamically raised you know grown sugar because the argument is bullshit to begin with. Sugar is bad for you, period, metabolically speaking, right? It doesn't, organic sugar, your pancreas doesn't know the difference between organic sugar and regular sugar. You know, your pancreas doesn't know the difference between refined, you know, like refined white crystals that come in the five pound bag or two pound bag, whatever it is. I haven't bought a bag of sugar in a million years. Um, it doesn't know the difference between that and the you know organic evaporated cane juice that is the the word they use to disguise the fact that it's still sugar on some kind of organic gluten-free artisanal small batch product so this whole thing is bullshit and i'm sorry to keep swearing but it's it is there's no that is the best word for this what was the meat organic oh my god you are not <laughs> That's not the point. Like, I, I guess I could just stop talk, talking here at, at seven minutes and change. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, don't even give these nonsense studies, these totally incredulous, these total lack of credibility studies, don't even give them enough credit to say, well, you know, of course, I see that your data showed that red meat is bad because you used supermarket cheap beef. That's just not how this works. Beef is not bad for you, period. Red, not just beef. We could be talking about venison. We could be talking about lamb. We could be talking about bison, um, any kind of red meat. It's not bad for you, period. Exclamation point, five exclamation points. You know, even better than a period. Um, it's just, don't, don't even waste your breath. Don't even entertain them. Don't indulge them. Don't even give them one shred of credit by even saying, if only you had used grass fed organic. Cause again, look at, look at the sugar, look at the fructose. Oh, was, was it organic orange juice? Was it organic agave nectar? Not the point. Um, I thought I had more to say. I guess I don't. But that's that's something that I have been wanting to say for a long time. And now I've said it. And have a nice day. Take care. Bye.